So when I put a saddle on the horse, it, and right now we're fitting, so I'm not going to put a pad, just a saddle. I'm always going to set the saddle down further forward than what I want the saddle to be, and then kind of rock it back in place until it settles in place. A couple of things that's going on here we just need to take account of. The back of the saddle is hitting him right here. I need to make sure that the saddle's not rubbing him. And we also need to be aware of he had pronounced shoulders right here and was hollow up front. So we need to make sure we have even pressure. Right here, there's a good bit of pressure. And when I feel under here, under this bar, there's bars on both sides of the saddle. When I feel under this bar, there's probably this much space. So what I'm gonna to have to do to get this saddle, or basically any saddle to fit this horse, I'm gonna to need to fill in this space in the middle to match the curve. As far as the width right here, the width isn't too bad. He's a little bit tight right there. He's gonna bite me, he? he shouldn't. Okay. It's a little bit tight right here But we're going to see what this looks like after I fill this in. Now, I get horses in for training that are, are most typically they're unfit or less fit than what they're going to be as, as their training progresses with me. So as his training progresses, he's going to be building up muscle here. He's going to be building up muscle back here. So what saddle fits him today is probably not going to fit him next week because they'll be building that muscle, the horse's back is gonna be changing. So what I have to do, I have to, I got three different saddles that I can usually make fit just about any horse that comes in. And I have to reassess that as the training goes. And you'll have to do that with your horse. As you ride your horse and the horse builds muscle, or as the seasons change between summer and winter, you have to reassess the saddle fit. You might have to make a change with your pad, a pad is not going to take a totally unfit and saddle and make it fit, but it will make a minor adjustment. It's kind of like what I'm doing right here. There's nothing too terribly wrong here except for I don't have enough contact here and I have too much contact here and I need to account for that. So let, let's throw a couple of pads on and we're going to talk about how that affects the saddle on him. So this is just a, a plain pad, nothing special about it. I'm not a huge fan of memory foam pads, uh, the, anything that, that compresses. I'm not a real big fan of those. Reason being, they do compress and they do mold to a point, but it's going to give you a false sense of that pad fixing a problem. That pad really not going to fix a problem that pad will help compensate some for a problem but in your mind you're going to think that that ill fit and saddle is taken care of by the pad and it really isn't i'm also i also want to comment about treeless saddles i'm really against treeless saddles and people have the concept that because it's a treeless saddle it molds better to the horse's back, which in theory it does. But once you sit in that saddle, you don't have the tree to spread that pressure out over a wider area. Because it's treeless, your weight, your contact is where it is. So there's no tree to spread that weight out. So I really don't like treeless saddles for that reason. It, it, they sell it because it molds to the horse's back, which it does, but it also doesn't help to distribute your weight over the horse's back, which is what the purpose of a tree is. So now I put this pad on. I still have this dip right here. I really haven't changed anything to fit his back. This where it's tight, it's still gonna be tight. I still have this dip and this saddle is still going to come back and hit right here. What I need to really fix this so that I can put even contact all over the horse's back is I'm going to fill this spot in here where I had that gap. So 
So basically, I'm going to start right behind this real pronounced shoulder. I'm not sure how you can see that, how good you can see it on the video. And he has one foot cocked, so that's going to affect it a little bit. When you stand on that foot, there we go. So I'm going to take this pad and use it to fill in where the, cat, the saddle didn't have contact. And then on top of that, I'm going to put this fleece pad, or felt pad rather. And now I have a better shape to work with. Now I'm going to put the saddle on. and shake the saddle back in place. Now I can run my hand under here. I have good contact here now. This contact that was on his shoulder blades is actually less there. That contact is what it should be. And then I'm not up against his hips back here anymore. So if he didn't have this dip right here, and I added that pad, I would be putting a lot of pressure right on his back. But because he has that dip in his back, I'm filling that in to make uh, basically a curve that more matches the curve of the tree that's in the saddle. So this arrangement here actually fits in pretty good. I would need to watch and make sure the pad doesn't rub right here. But as I talked about, when he collects, he should be rotating his hip getting his back in under him and that issue should go away. Now the, the other issue that goes on with this horse, when this saddle is sitting where it wants to be, where the curve of the tree of the saddle matches this curve that I've built up, that puts my cinch strap a little bit further forward than what I'd really like it to be. It's right there. I'd really like it to be like right there and it wants to be here so what i'm going to have to pay attention to is to make sure i don't get a girth rub right here and i'll watch that by picking his foot up and pulling it forward I, you'll see that in a minute to get it's not really going to move the girth back but it's going to give a little bit of release to this skin that's going to be caught right here and then pulled forward when he moves his foot forward a lot of girth rubs are caused for this reason. The saddle wants to be a little bit forward in relation to the leg because the saddle has to fit where the curve of the tree matches the curve of the back. The saddle has to go there. So you have to account for the shoulder blades, you have to account for the girth. So let me put a girth on at this saddle, show you what I'm talking about. See what I just pulled it up. See how close it is right here in relation to his elbow. Now, if you have a, a saddle with adjustable rigging up here, you could fix that by changing, like some of them have two rings. You can go down and then go up to the back ring. That's gonna shift your saddle back. That, rigging is for this situation but this saddle that i have that fits his back doesn't have that kind of rigging so that's what i have to work with so now what i'm going to do i just got it just a little snug i'm gonna pick his leg up and pull his leg forward your foot to pull that skin out and then put it back down now that should prevent rubs, even though I didn't move the girth back, I gave him a little bit of space right there. Put your foot back where it was. There you go. He's got the skin right there in order to move. Another thing to be aware of, because of where the girth is gonna sit on him, I wouldn't want this ring to be hitting his elbow right here as his leg goes forward to back. So this, this saddle, an arrangement is not ideal for him if he was your horse and 
he was in the riding condition that you were going to keep him in long term, you would probably order special order a saddle to fit just him. But in this situation, what fits him today is not going to fit him next week. I would have to make a change. So you have to kind of weigh that in with your horse and what you're going to do with your horse. So let's go ahead and I'm going to work him a little bit and we'll come back and look for the saddle marks. It's not very warm this morning. I'm not sure how much sweat there's going to be, but uh, we'll work him a minute. We'll see. So we'll pull the saddle off and we'll look at the marks and see what his back looks like. I just took the girth off. I always take the girth off of my saddles. So let's see what we got here. I know he's not sweating because I didn't work him hard enough. So where I built, put that pad in and built up was right here. It feels all consistent. Like I said, I didn't really get him all that hot, didn't get him all that sweaty. Feels real consistent. I, I, you would tell better if I'd actually loped him, got him hotter, then we'd be able to see a little bit better. But there's no, there's no ruffled hair marks. A lot of times if you're pinching really hard, you'll see the hair ruffled up kind of like that. There's no ruffled hair and all looks good. All looks like it did when I saddled him up. So that's a, that'll help you with a saddle fit and getting kind of an odd horse to a, a saddle to fit them. If you have a horse that's out of shape and you know you're going to be putting a lot of time on them getting them back fit again don't order a special saddle when you first start get get them fit and then get you a custom fit saddle i have another video on how to uh how to, to measure and order for a custom fit saddle but don't do that until after you get the horse fit because if you do it now while he's unfit then that saddle's not going to fit after you've got him muscled up so uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Until next time, thank you for watching.